It's raw. It's in your face. 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 Like, literally. That's the tagline you're going to use. That's the phrase. That's the hook. It's raw. It's in your face. Vince apparently had been catching one too many pornos in his free time. You can imagine my surprise, somewhat puzzled, but pleasant surprise, when I was watching SmackDown on a Friday night, and I saw not only promotion for Monday Night Raw, but extensive promotion. We're going to do this, and we got this, you got this match, you got that match, this is going to happen, and that's going to happen. I said, what in the hell is going on here? It's almost like you're following basic advertising, marketing, promotional tactics in order to try and gain exposure to your brand and potentially draw in viewers. You're like, holy hell, such a crazy concept that it just might work. Of course, it didn't. But it's one of those fundamental things you're sitting there saying to yourself, why all of a sudden now do you give a crap to announce what's going to happen on the next show? Why all of a sudden do you have all these things mapped out and planned out? And we know what the reason was. is because Vince was panicked about what was going to happen on Monday night with the start of the NFL season going up against a Monday night football doubleheader. And on the one hand, he should have been mortified and horrified at the potential of possibility of what could happen. Because you already know how the viewership picture's been looking for Raw for the past several years now. And every year you come around to them going up against Monday Night Football, the ratings take another dip until you get to January, and then they spike up maybe just a little bit, but they never spike back up to the same level. It's like every year it drops throughout the year, then you get to September, there's a bigger drop, and then when it rebounds, it doesn't rebound to the September levels. And that's your new starting point every year. And that's from an overall viewership standpoint, that is from a demographic standpoint, does not really matter. And, you know, some people are going to say, well, this is Vince thinking actually has some type of competition and viewing that as competition. And when he feels like there's competition, that's when he's going to care and put forth more effort until he totally and completely loses interest, which is what happens every year. But I, but I think it speaks to a larger what I perceive as fundam fundamental problem with the approach and mindset of Vince McMahon and the company that he owns, WWE. And the way I kind of look at it is, if you think about going back to the old Monday Night Wars, a lot of you reflect on these as great times, as glorious times, and talk about you know, this was the peak of competition, and competition brings the best out of everybody. That, that could be true to a degree, but it depends upon the game that you're playing. And what I mean is, if you've got two key players, in this case it was WWF and WCW, and they're both trying to be number one, and they're both going against each other to be number one, they have something to base what they do off of. They have something to go up against, a point for comparison. So that can work for a period of time, but eventually what happens if you start to worry too much about what the other is doing and not worrying enough about taking care of your own business and handling your own house, then eventually your house is going to crumble like a house of cards, which in a lot of ways is exactly what happened to WCW. And as a byproduct, what eventually happens is Vince ends up buying WCW for just a couple of million dollars in 2001 and you know here comes ECW as well and all of a sudden Vince is the only major show in town and for a guy that for so many years based himself on expansion and growth and getting into new markets and snuffing out competition for him when you got to 2001 and he was really, truly left alone on the wrestling mountaintop, especially in North America. I really honestly think it was an incredibly uncomfortable position for him to be in. 
you could call it like finite game. It was like a finite game where he's trying to be number one, the others, the opponent's trying to be number one. Once you don't have the opponent anymore, you've lost that kind of finite player, I guess. And now you have nothing to base yourself off of. And you haven't been thinking about the long-term play. Where you could use it as an example of a long-term play, or more like an infinite type of game. You could think about that when the WWE went public. You know, when they're trying to create their stupid WWE studios. Like, those are more long-term plays that are not about necessarily competing against anybody. That is about growing themselves and becoming bigger and becoming better. You could disagree with the mindset. You could disagree with the execution and the ultimate results. But when you do those types of things, those feels like feel like the type of things, even though I've said plenty of critical things about WWE over the years, certainly and deservedly so, in part because Vince has always wanted to pretend like he's a movie guy. He's not a movie guy. He's not a sports entertainment guy. He's a goddamn wrestling guy. And he needs to stop being embarrassed and ashamed of that. It's okay to be a wrestling guy. Especially when you're worth a couple of billion dollars. But once that competition went away to the larger point, he just, it was never the same. And we've been on this long term downward trajectory, I think, as a result. And when you see now him try to sit there and pretend like he gives a crap because he's going up against Monday Night Football. I just beg the question, like, why do you need something to come in and sap your ratings to give a crap? Where is your pride? Where is your desire to say, regardless of what the hell else is going on in the world, I want to make sure each and every single week that I give my customers, whether in the cases of when you can have fans in attendance, the paying customers in attendance, or the people that pay for their streams or their cable or whatever the case might be. Why wouldn't you want to go out there just from a personal pride standpoint with your name being so closely attached to that product and want to do the best that you can do each and every single week? And this is not some kumbaya bullshit. I think this is just basic professionalism, basic business 101. You should want to do the best you can every single week. And if Vince McMahon was sitting here in my face right now, I would tell him shame on him for coming across like most weeks he doesn't care. Because you cannot say when you saw all of those matches and all those things being announced during SmackDown for what was coming up on Raw and say that you see that every week. You clearly don't. And this is not just some big example of all of a sudden, hey, we're just going to make it a big show. So, so you might pump a little bit more into it. It's the fact of you don't do these types of things on a consistent basis suggest a lack of focus and attention to the things that matter, a lack of caring, a lack of personal and professional pride. And above all else, I think that is my biggest vexation and frustration with Vincent K. McMahon. Like you are still the unquestioned wrestling king. And you could have the AEW people come in here and talk about beating NXT and who cares? Like it's Vince's third show. You know what I mean? Like that's your third show. You've got three shows that you run that appear on freaking national cable television and prime time. Like, that's the stuff you should be focusing on. You should be trying to make those shows the best that they could possibly be. To hell with what any other wrestling company is doing, even if they did eventually start beating you in the ratings. To hell with what anybody else is doing in football or anything else. And I feel bad because over the years I've talked about the importance of competition and how much it's hurt the product of WWE that they haven't had competition but the problem is, is that Vince McMahon was so based on competition that once he didn't have a direct threat to him, he let off the gas. It just hasn't been the same and it never will be. And when you see these things like, raw oh, in your face, it just comes across like a desperate man grasping for straws because he took his eye off the damn ball for way too long. And even if you want to be one of those people that tries to defend it and say, well, wrestling's not in that bad of a spot. Vince's company's not in that bad of a spot. You have so many people cutting the cord. Bullshit. 
absolute total bullshit. Sure, you have had people cut the cord. Cord cutting does not account for a 50% decrease in raw viewership over the, what, past five to seven years? That ain't the excuse you can use now! Get over that! Back when this channel just started, and even before that, the old Off the Rope show, if I remember correctly, there were still plenty of Raws that were doing four, a little bit more than four million viewers, and we were talking about things being bad then! And I was lucky to crack one eight. And even if you want to put the Meltzer demographic spin on it, the demographic performance is just as bad as the overall viewership number compared to many years ago. Like, why all of a sudden now would you give a crap? And, and the reality is you just don't. You only give a crap because it's that petty level McMahon that he doesn't want anybody else to beat him, that he's just got to compete. Like, that's just not healthy. Like, even if you're in the, the working world, the business world, you could sit there and find somebody else to be your rival. And I don't, I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with that. Find somebody, more importantly, that you can put your ego aside and say, you know what, that person is better than me. And I want to be like them. But you should be doing that, not for the purposes of beating them, but you're doing that for the purpose of, I want to meet their level and eventually exceed their level, which will help me achieve these goals, which will help me realize and fulfill these dreams that I have. If your whole basis is just to beat that person from a competition standpoint and you have no significant long-term goals attached that you're pushing towards as a part of that with no long-term dreams that you're trying to realize, then it is just a, just a wasted time of energy and you know what you're never going to do. You're never going to surpass that person. It's almost like Vince McMahon has lost sight of the game that he's in. Like, you want to be in the entertainment industry, and I understand that you're on national television, you're on a cable network, so the ratings are going to matter some. That's sure, sure, absolutely. But your ratings have been trending down for so, so long, for so many years, and just on a continual downward trend. Like, why all of a sudden now is a big deal? Now, why all of a sudden do you give a shit? I think that's my frustration, is it shouldn't take Monday Night Football coming back to actually show that you care. It shouldn't take Monday Night Football going up against your product to say, hey, you know what? I might want to promote some of the animals that are going to appear on TV Monday night. I'm just saying. 